Praise the Lord. At this time, I want to bring to the podium Sister Black. Praise She's coming Lord. to speak Hallelujah. as the Holy Ghost believer. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. This is definitely not my area. It is but area. Don't worry about it. I will let the Lord do right. whatsoever he needs me to do. Amen. 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 I greet our bishop, his wife, Pastor Gallimore, Amen. my beautiful saints, the women's president, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. And I honor and need the Holy Spirit yes. in this hour. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm going to try my best. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you, O oh God, because you are the supreme one. All wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes from you, O oh God. Here is your word that you have entrusted in your servant. Lord, I have no idea what it is that you want me to say to your people, but I humble myself before you today, oh God. Speak through me as an oracle, oh God, not that I am worthy because I am not, but Lord, you are worthy and you need a message to be delivered unto your people. So as I humble myself before you, oh God, I just thank you for the Holy Spirit and I welcome you, Holy Spirit, to rule and reign in my body and filter through your people. Break chains, bring revelation like we've never heard it before, oh God. Sanctify yourself and glorify yourself in this hour in the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. The scripture that I was given, the theme that I was given is God's power in our weakness. Mm -hmm. The scriptures that I'll be speaking from tonight will be 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, and 2 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Now, when I looked at um, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, I realized that I needed to go back a couple verses to get the meat of this message. So I'll read from verse seven to nine, and then I'll go over to 13, verse four. If you can stand, please stand for the reading of the word. That is 2 Corinthians verse 12, verses seven through nine, and then 2 Corinthians verse 13, um, chapter 13, verses four. And I'll begin at verse seven. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it may depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now we move over to chapter 13, verse 4, which reads, For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. There ended the reading of a portion of God's words. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. I looked up. What stuck out to me was the word weakness. So I did some research as the Lord was speaking to me. What? is weakness and what does the lord mean by weakness while the gospels often use the word weakness to describe the many illnesses jesus healed 
The concept of weakness is seldomly used in a physical sense in scripture. In fact, the incarnational the theology of the gospel set forth the most important spiritual principle. The infleshing of the word means that God's power is most preeminently evident in human weakness. Praise the Lord. The paralleling of divine empowerment and human suffering in the life of Christ commenced with his birth and continues through the cross and the resurrection. Indeed, the cross and the resurrection encapsulate the paradox of God's power being evidence in the midst of human suffering and weakness. For Paul, the principle of strength and weakness serves as a paradigm of life and ministry. Humankind is weak by nature, yet weakness is the very point at which God reveals his power and grace. Human weakness is not a liability only because it makes room for the power of God. Weakness facilitates dependency on God. It cultivates the appropriation of grace and ascribes all glory and credit to God. For these reasons, Paul boasts in his weakness and views it as a sign of true apostleship. So this scripture is telling me that we are to be humble. This weakness is not a physical weakness, but it's realizing that you need to depend on the almighty God in all that we do. Paul was not weak, but because of the abundance of revelation that he received from God, he made sure well, the Lord made sure to give him a thorn in the flesh, lest he boast and think that he is as God. So sometimes we may receive an abundance of revelation because the Lord will use us according to our faith. But we cannot allow the Lord using us to take precedence of the God that is using us. We must always remain humble underneath God and understand that we are being used by the Almighty God. We are just vessels being used by God. Amen. 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 If I go to the Bible and I ask for a testimony, Moses would say in Exodus 4, verse 12 to 15, that his human shortcomings was a problem. He told God that I cannot speak. So I cannot do the work that you call me to do. However, God replied to Moses was go anyway, because I will be with you. Amen. I will go and draw from another testimony. If we ask Gideon, when God chose Gideon to lead Israel against the Midianite, Gideon called himself the least of the weakest. However, the Lord's presence was with Gideon and it made him mighty, turning his weakness into strength. So again, the Lord is teaching us from past and present that we don't rely on our strength, but it's the strength of God that is arising in us, that is allowing us to overcome these things. And we are weak in many areas because the flesh is weak. The Bible says the flesh is weak, but the heart is willing. So if we realize that our flesh will cause us to sin, but we come and humble ourselves before God and say, God, this flesh is causing me to sin. Crucify this flesh. Put a thorn in this flesh so that I may humble myself, that your power may be exalted in me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to touch... 13 verse 4 because it says for though he was crucified through weakness this is talking about our lord and savior jesus christ yet he lived by the power of god now was jesus weak was he weak in the sense that we see weak no his weakness was knowing that he was god all supreme, all powerful. He could have called on a 
angels from heaven to war upon behalf. But he instead took the position of a humble servant to allow for what God's divine plan was to filter through him so that all can be saved. So this is teaching me that it doesn't matter what position I hold. My position is to stay in position with the will of God. So it doesn't matter if I can fire Evangelist Salmon. But if the Lord says, keep her, I have to keep her. Amen. It doesn't matter if Sister Richardson said something about me. If the Lord said, forgive her, I have to forgive Amen. her. Because it's not my will, but it's the will of the Lord. Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, let thy will be done. So this is teaching me that I need to crucify my will. I need to crucify the things that I think that I need to do and let the will of God be perfected in my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. I would like to call on two sisters to give two testimonies of how God's power was showcased in their weaknesses. Sister Florine, please come on up. Praise him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. the Lord. Amen. I just want to give him praise. praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to glorify him. Amen. Because he's Amen. worthy yes, to be praised. Yes. I want to thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Just for placing me wherever he wants me to yes. be. Amen. At whatever time he wants me to be. Yes. I believe some time ago Bishop was preaching about, I think is, um, from John 14 or 15 where he said ye have not chosen me Amen. but I have chosen you Amen. and ordained you that ye should go and bear forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever he shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you and I remember that word just grab a hold on me and I was saying, Lord, even before the sermon, I feel like running to the altar. But when I came to the altar, I just started to think that I did not choose myself. Yeah. I cannot do what I want with my life. Yeah. It is yeah. your will, Lord. I cannot say what I want to say. Yes. But that word will come back and it will be tried in your life. Amen. Whatever word the Lord gives you, it will Amen. be tried Amen. in your Amen. life. Amen. So I went on this job. I went on this job and I am the only person of my color among the people. And it's a very difficult situation for me. It is like everyone, you know, is just coming at you. It's like the objects when I listen to what the Lord was saying, the objects just coming around you. But his strength alone mm. is made perfect in my weaknesses. Yes, yes. And my flesh began to take over. But then I began to pray. I said, Lord, you have me there for a purpose. What am I supposed to do? And all how I look, I'm only coming up with one thing. When I turn on the TV fasting, read the word of God fasting. And some prayers can only be answered through fasting and prayer. So I began to pray. I said, Lord, I'm going to fast, you know, whatever day. And I fasted that day, not even for the whole day, but the half day. Yeah. And I went to work that day. And everyone, it was just changed. The atmosphere just changed. Amen. And everyone came and we were having such wonderful time. So I want to give God thanks. I want to give God yeah. praise Amen. that we should not give up. Yeah. And even yesterday, somebody invited me to church. I went. And what do you think the pastor was talking about? He was talking about like the womb. Sometimes we are placed in the womb. Right. And we need to get out of that womb. Amen. And wherever God placed you at this time, that is where he wants That's you. Right. So don't be afraid of the hypocrites. They will come. They will speak. They will Amen. talk. Yeah. But you have to stay.
stand firm in God because God is doing a new thing and we don't even know that. He's doing a new thing among us and it will spring up among us. He will make a way in the wilderness. Amen. And these words just strengthened and encouraged me. So I just want to, oh God, to tell you all today to fast, to pray. Let us continue to pray. God is making a way. He's Amen. doing That's something right. among us. Amen. But we need to live by faith Amen. and not by what we yeah. see. Amen. Amen. His strength is made perfect. perfect. You know, Amen. Amen. Sister Diana. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord. It's, it's good to read the word of the God Amen. and to see the testimony of our past brethren. But sometimes we need to hear live testimonies Amen. of the word of God being active in our lives. Amen. Amen. And this is why I've called on these two ladies because sometimes we need to experience things for ourselves Amen. to prove God yes. and his word. Amen. Sister Diana, to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord another time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. And thank God for the opportunity tonight. Amen. Show it all. Show it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God. Show it all, show it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I thank God for the mountain, and I thank Him for the valley, and I thank Him for the storm He brought me through. But if I never had no problem, I wouldn't know that God would solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God's to do. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus, and I've learned to trust in God. In 2015, 2015, I lost everything that I worked for. I work private. I, you know, you work private to get all that money. And I go into a business and it fell. And through that time, my rent go up to $10,000. I couldn't pay nothing. He used to talk about it, but nothing happened. And I remember during the time, I have a lot of things going on. And for the $10,000, I'm still paying. I owe $600 right now. My landlord never put me out or even say a least thing. But during the time, I learned to trust in Jesus. And I learned to trust in God. And I stay committed to God. Amen. And I remember I was praying and I even went in depression. Nobody know. I come in here and nobody know. But the first time I go down in depression, Bertrand, I find myself in Jamaica, around Eglin Town. And... Um, I was there and I saw another sister who used to come to this church before. And she said to me, you're coming. There was, where I was, we have a lot of mango tree in that area. So I said, no, I'm not going. And she said, come on, bring my daughter with me. So I, I take the child and I was going. But during the time I was going up, I'm calling out to her and all I hear in is hoo-hoo. And I'm saying about the same thing, but I'm not seeing anybody. 
Bertie and I decided that I'm going to come back down. And when I was coming down, water was coming up. I go this side, water. I go this side, water. So all I have to do is continue to go up. I reach up to like it's a rooftop. And I saw a ship. And when I saw the ship, there was a man present himself to me and he said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Lucy. He said, I'm not going to Lucy, I'm going to Montego Bay. Because I can walk from Montego Bay to Lucy. Brethren, I came out of the depression after that about eight months. After again, the, the problems that I was going at the stress, I was going to I go back down in depression. This time I was inside of my house and I was not sleeping, but I, I give up. This time I give up because I couldn't deal with so many things was going on in my life. I remember I was at work and there was this doctor, I remember I was in the ER and this doctor came to me. I, was, I went from the ER outside and he came to me and he said, you know, I like you a lot and I can't mind you. And I remember I turned to him and I said, I appreciate it, but I think God can take care of me. Amen. Brethren, things going on, I still keep stand fast for God. And I, when I, I went home the day and I was lying down and I, as I said, I, I gave up. And I, I, I took, I'm not lying, I took some pill because I, I want to go, I want to die. This time I want to die. And while I was laying down on the bed, I was not sleeping. And all of a sudden I, I, I felt there was a lot of water and a ship came inside the room. And they, there was this man standing on the ship and there was a sail put up. And I heard the voice say, Diana, hold on. I didn't pay the mind. I heard the voice call me again and said, Diana, blessed be the name of Jesus, hold on. Bridging, the last call, when the last call called me, I jumped from the bed. And I lay my back on the bed like this. And I was looking around in the room, but there was nobody. Then I realized that this is the voice of God. Virgin, the, after that, I started to pray. And the Spirit said to me, I need you to worship me. Virgin, I came in here from 2000 and I think it was 16, 17. And I started to run these aisles. Amen. And I started to run these aisles. And brethren, the more I run these aisles, I, I was working like $435. And all the $435 I said couldn't do anything. That $435 started to do stuff. Amen. And I realized that my life started to change. Everything Amen. started to change. Amen. Here I am today just trying to hold on Amen. on the promise of God. You might have not seen me. But I stay connected. Yeah. I stay connected because I'm not the person who came in here 2010. I'm not that person. And I swear to myself, I tell myself, that I will not open my mouth again in open door apostolic. So when brethren, you just see me sit down and not saying anything. I know the reason why. I want to stand firm for God. If you don't see me, pray for me. I continue to pray for you all. So be my strength in Jesus' name. Amen. The beautiful ladies for Amen. your testimonies. Amen. God hovers over his word. God watches over his word. He said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that is a promise unto all of us. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Yes, is. Praise the Lord. Now, I realize there's a correlation between weakness and power. Amen. When you read the scriptures, it said that my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities Amen. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And then when we went to the other scripture, it said, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. Amen. Amen. So there's a correlation between weakness and power. We can either take weakness for what the world see weakness as, or we can use that weakness to let the power of God be glorified. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I just want to end on this note. The spiritual union between the believer and Christ permits us to experience not only the weakness and the suffering of the cross, but also the power and the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that by their fruits, we shall know them. Now the, whole, the evidence of the Holy Ghost is not just speaking in tongues. Amen. It is the fruits that we show Amen. each and every day. Amen. If you tell me you have the Holy Ghost, let me see your walk. Amen. Are you able to say your strength is made perfect in my weakness? If I feel like I want to go at someone, it's the Holy Ghost in me speaking up and restraining me from going against a brother or going against a sister or speaking against a brother or speaking against a sister. The fruits is evidence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anyone can talk in tongues. Let me see you walk. Amen. 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 Those are my few words. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for the word. Hallelujah. 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 God's power in our weakness. Paul knew he had a weakness. And Paul knew that he could glory in himself. But Paul says, I'd rather not glory in the things that I can do. But I'd rather glory in my infirmity. That was some awesome words and some awesome, awesome testimonies. Hallelujah. Sometimes, my God, we think that we are so, my God, together that we are always strong. But God doesn't care about you being strong. What he cares about is your humility. Yeah. It's you coming down to the left of the Lord. My will, not my will, but your will yeah. be done. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much schooling you have or how much you've read the word of God. Because Paul did. But Paul said, I'd rather glory in my weakness. I'd rather do the will of God than my will. And I'm so glad tonight to listen to the word. It says, my grace is sufficient. So when you feel like you can't make it and you feel like you can't do some things, remember it is not you. Because sometimes we think it's us. Sometimes we have all these great things and we think it's us. But as great as Paul was... Paul says his grace is sufficient. It means that God is enough. Hallelujah. Amen. So no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, I am weak. I can't do anything of my own. The Lord of Son says, I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus keeps me from all wrong. So it's not me. I can't do it by myself. I can't even pray by myself. I can't walk by myself. I can't even understand the scriptures by myself. And so tonight, let us understand that there is power in our weakness. Amen. God's power. When we are weak, let's talk about God. Let's go to him and say, Lord, I can't. Paul could boast. He had what to boast about. But he says, I dare not. Unless I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelation that was given unto me. But he said there was a thorn in my flesh. Sometimes God put thorns in our flesh. Because he knows we're going to boast about our education. He knows we can boast about the many house we have or cars we have. But Paul says he put a thorn. I prayed three times. But the Lord didn't do anything. But he told me that his grace 
is sufficient. I like when the word is written in the present tense. Didn't say it was. Because even today, his grace is still sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. For me, for my strength is made perfect when I'm weaker. Hallelujah. He said his strength, when it is of God, when it's through the power of God, he said, then am I strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When it's God's will, then am I strong. When we trust God in every situation, we come out victorious. I listen to the testimony. And my God, she was weak in the flesh. Yeah. My God, the natural weakness took over. Hallelujah. But when it becomes the will of God, glory to God, then she becomes strong. Yeah. When it becomes the will of God, when it's your will, it does the work. No. When it's what you want, it does the work. So tonight, let's take the word. God's power. He don't care about how strong you are. Sometimes we think we have to be strong and, and I, I have to fast 10 days and I have to be at a level up here. God doesn't care about that. What he wants is humility. What he wants is us saying, Lord, yeah. I can't do it by myself. Yeah. What he wants is your humility to look at yourself and say, it's not me. Yeah. Sometimes we testify as if it's me. I did it. I, nope. no, not His me. grace. Mm -hmm. We're closing. Hallelujah. We're closing tonight. But just take these words tonight and humble yourself before the Lord. The Bible says we come as a little child before him. A little child humble, glory to God, to her father which art in heaven, glory to God. God is a good God, glory to God. He's a mighty God. There is no limitation in your weakness. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to want help. It's okay to depend on, my God, the grace of God. It's okay. Sometimes we say, Lord, I bother you too much. But he wants us to come to him every time. The lesson this morning in our service, we said, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's why David could write all of his psalms. Because when David is at his lowest, hallelujah, when he's in a particular place, he goes to God. Where his source is, the sufficiency of God is what we need in our lives every day. Thank you, Sister Black, for reminding us that it's not me. Amen. Paul said, I could glory. Oh, he said, but lest I should be exalted above measure. And sometimes we exalt ourselves above measure. But the thorn in my flesh, Satan buffet me, lest I should be exalted. For this thing I besought the Lord three times. Thrice the book says that it may depart, but he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. God bless you tonight. God keep you tonight. His grace is sufficient. Is sufficient. For my strength is made perfect in his weakness. God bless you tonight. I'm going to ask our pastor to close for us our closing prayer. But remember, we stand everywhere. God's grace is sufficient. Amen. Our pastor to you at this time in Jesus' praise name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to give God thanks for this evening. Giving God thanks for the women department. Amen. Praise God, I was blessed sitting down there and listening to the testimonies, yeah. praise God, and also the message, yeah. praise God, from over there, Sister Black. God bless you, yeah. wonderful yeah. word. Amen, amen. Amen, praise God. Uh, God is a good God. Yeah. And indeed, in our weaknesses, there is strength. Yeah. There is strength. Yeah. And God don't work like you and I work. Yeah. His ways is not our ways. His ways is past finding out. Oh God. I bless the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. today because of his grace yes. and because of his mercy. Amen. Amen. And every day I get a chance to stand in the presence of God. I just give him glory because I'm not worthy. Amen. I'm not saying we are. I'm saying I am not. But God grace brought me Amen. 
safe thus far his grace will lead me home let us pray father and the word god i thank you for this moment in time lord god almighty we have been on this road a long time sometimes we are tired sometimes we are discouraged sometimes we are cast down but i thank you for your grace and for your mercy we have come oh god to this point we're about to go to the several homes of a board lord god almighty i pray that you will dismiss us with heaven's choices blessings i thank you lord for this department i thank you lord god for what the woman is doing i thank you lord god almighty you call them from darkness into this marvelous light lord i know that you are not through with us yet but in process oh god almighty help us just to behave ourselves wisely before your presence so lord you can do and make out of our lives what you want to do lord god almighty today we might be dishonorable vessels but i pray you help us to humble ourselves lord god that in due time we can be honorable vessels in your house use us oh god to your honor and to your glory have thine own sweet will and we oh god almighty as we look to you in the name of jesus amen amen amen, amen. no by the saving grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god the father a fully fellowship always for the comforter rest remain and abide with us all both now and forever amen